So it's a situation, Tim, where I think success on the field will really pay off next year. And we're already seeing it with next year's recruiting class because they say uh, success on the field, a, bi a big emergence for a particular team kind of pays off in recruiting the next year. And we know James Franklin hit the, um, the ground running when he hit Happy Valley, and he's a great recruiter. That's never been in question. So even in just winning seven games, you were getting top 20 classes with no issue. But uh, – the, the 18 class is looking really strong, and obviously there's a long way to go, but that, that Rose Bowl of the Big Ten Championship, that has to be paying off and paying dividends for you. Well, it's it certainly has. It's, it's funny you bring up the 18 class because just within the last – this the past uh, two days, they've, uh, they've reeled in three more commitments for the 18 class, which is already ranked number one, by the way, in 27 sports, but now they've – distance themselves from number two, which is, I believe, Florida State off the top of my head. But um, they got a couple uh, They got a couple more uh, big-time recruits, and most notable being Ricky Slade, who is a uh, number one ranked running back in the country and number one player in the state of Virginia. So that, that's a guy that Penn State had been on since James Franklin first came to State College in 2014. And so they're, you know, they're – you know, their long-term commitment and hard work really paid off there with the kid because I know Virginia Tech was hard after him too. Um, another, And then they also got a Charlie Catcher, uh, outside linebacker, you know, tall guy, 6'3", 198 pounds. So you can imagine if he bonks up his frame once he comes to Penn State, he can be a real, you know, force for years to come. And uh, they also got another linebacker in Jesse Lucetta, also a six three, two hundred twenty five pounds, so he might come in a little more polished. Um, but they, yeah, so the so at linebacker they got some more commits for the future, which you know, as I said before, linebackers an area where they need to build up their depth still. But um, yeah, getting getting Slade was, I, he's probably him and Micah Parsons, both five star recruits, are the crown jewels of this class. Uh, Parsons is a defensive end. From Harrisburg, and he he actually is uh, he's committed to Penn State. Although he has been taking visits, he's been to Ohio State a couple times recently, and he plans to take another official visits. And and that's that's rubbed some people some in the fan base the wrong way, but there's also others, and I I can understand this too. I I you know I think um, if you have the opportunity to go visit other schools, they're gonna do it on their dime. You know, I'm a problem with you taking a visit. You know, I think I think he's a kid who just wants to enjoy the process. You know, even though it's a little, maybe a little nerve wracking at times to to hear oh he had this excellent visit to Ohio State or Virginia Tech or wherever he goes, and and then wonder oh is he going to stick? But you know, so far he's stuck with the class. So hopefully that'll he'll stay that way. Um, tight ends another position where they've stocked up on in uh, uh, four-star player Zach Koontz, six seven and a half, maybe six eight out of PA. Uh, his he has a couple older brothers who played for Penn State in the past, but he's by far the most talented of his siblings. And uh, Pat Fryermuth out of uh, Andover, Massachusetts, uh, six five tight end. So you know, there's those are two guys to keep an eye on that position. Yeah, I'm looking at this 2018 class and to see that you've got three of these guys arguably rated at number one at their position in the country or in the top two or three in their state is pretty amazing. So it's off to a great start. I mean, you, you watch you watch him anytime he he speaks to people, or to reporters, whatever. You can you can just tell he oozes that charisma, and that's and I think that's what the kid you know 17, 18 year old kids seem to be attracted to, but you know, he has a way of being able to personally relate to these kids. And you know, one thing he, he really, he strongly emphasizes the team as a family. Like he, you know, and him being a father to two young girls, I think it's easy for him to, to do that. But he, he has a, he always emphasizes his family and you could, and I, I could tell this year, especially there was a full buy into the full family concept. Like everyone on that team seemed to be, you know, they, they all seem to embrace each other. You know, they were there for each other, win or lose. That wasn't quite the case this first couple of years because you got to remember, he when he first came in, he was their third 
he was the third different head coach they had had in the last four years. So you had seniors in that team who were freshmen when Joe Paterno was still coach, you know, who then saw their, you know, entire universe come crashing apart. And then, you know, Bill O'Brien came in and, you know, helped prevent the ship from sinking and they all bought into him. But then he jumps to the NFL after two years. And so they suddenly there's this third guy. They got to, you know, they got to embrace. And he, you know, he brings that, he say he brings that Chris, but maybe those, Older players, they didn't quite. Uh, maybe they found his. Maybe they found it a bit hokey from from him compared to, you know, O'Brien and Paterno. But for whatever reason, there just wasn't quite the buy-in from the upper class at the time. But now, with Franklin bringing all his kids in, kids who've bought into his style from day one, it's. I mean, you can you can see they've. Uh, they really enjoy playing for somebody like him. You know, he brings that. You know, I, I think he. I think he's got. He had the reputation for a while up until this season. I think he had a reputation of, you know, being this great recruiter, but not such a good coach. And I, you know, and I was glad to see uh, them have this successful season they just had. I think it dispels a lot of those rumors, not rumors. It dispels a lot of those uh, stereotypes about him. All right, uh, Tim Aiden from uh, Black Shoe Diaries joining us to uh, wrap up the 2017 Penn State class. Tim, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the time. My pleasure.